So today, we're going to be talking about the Undercover Dirty Dog. All right. What's up and welcome to Beauty Under Construction. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you've been here before, what's up? What's up? How you doing? You got to like, comment, and if you haven't subscribed already, you being a little petty, you being a little petty, subscribe. So, today I have a special guest here. It's my mom. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Catherine. Usually people call me Miss Cat. Yes, yes. And today, we're discussing the undercover Dirty, Dirty John. John. I don't know if y'all seen it on Netflix, but Dirty John had came out. And first of all, John was dirty, but really... Well, we talking dirty. about um, Betty's husband, cause Betty, Betty's husband was gaslighting all day, all day. So gaslighting, if y'all don't know what that is, that's when like, like you psychologically like manipulate people into thinking they're crazy. And a lot of men, I'm not trying to be biased either. It's just statistically proven. Do it to females. Okay. All right, mom. So give the background about what you remember from Betty season or John season, whichever comes to mind. Well, okay. Let's see. I guess we'll start with John because John was first. Right. He was a manipulator. He was a liar. He was a snake. A snake. A dirty snake. A dirty snake. Snake. I mean, you guys should really go watch the movie. It's really interesting, and it's based on a true, true story. story. That's what the Both craziest part is. That's what the part that makes you like. And then when you think about it, the crazy part is there's a lot of undercover dirty John. Exactly, a lot of them. Because a lot of times, like we have, we I know we have trouble explaining like what they're doing. We're like, no, like they. No, they're making me look crazy. Like, a lot of times we say that. And Dirty John really, like, put that into light for some of the people who just didn't understand. Because he was he was gaslighting, like, a lot. And a lot of men, I can, well, some men, I can say, be, like, they gaslight. And I just don't understand, like, why do they do that? They play off of our, they play off of our emotions, kind of. They, mm -hmm. like... They try to get us in an emotional state of mind, like this emotional part of us. And then after that, they like as soon as we get upset about it or anything like that, they're like, see, 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 look at you, look mm -hmm. at you. And it's like... And they be pushing all the buttons. All of mm -hmm. them, all of mm -hmm. them. And this is just, yeah, Dirty John really, really showed that, put it to light for some people. Especially like when it came down to Betty's husband. And it's almost like he set it up from the beginning. He set it up, he got married with this woman, had kids with her, and then he totally, I mean, still, you know, you're supposed to um, control your own feelings, but if you know this is your husband and you've been with him for years and this is how y'all run things. It was like 17 would, years, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And this whole time he's setting it up and he, he's talking to his boys at a round table on how, okay, this is what you do, and this is how we're going to, you know, set up the divorce, and this is how you could take her for everything. Like, what? But this is your wife, and she helped you. Exactly. Get Through to it where all. you got. But he didn't, he didn't remember that. He didn't see that. No, not that he didn't remember. It was a whole setup. So he remembered. That's true. He, he did didn't remember. Care. He just didn't care. And he, he forgot where he came from, too. Like, uh -huh. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's really a good movie and you guys should and, watch um, it that brings me to another point because there was times where they were like she was trying to talk to him about it like she was trying to say like hey like I feel like I feel like you're acting different and I feel like you're doing this and, and then after that he'd be like no you're crazy you're being emotional this that and the third and then later on one day he was like yeah you're right you were right about it all Cause remember that scene when he was in the restaurant with her, and he and she was you know 
they can have my, but he didn't take it as that. Yeah, like, wow, like, babe. Why you bring up the past? Right. Yeah. Like, wow, babe, look where we came from. Look where we're eating now. What's some fancy restaurant? I can't remember the name of the restaurant right now. But, and then he totally shut her down. Like, why are you discussing that? Like, what you mean? This is where we came from. We should be proud that we're here now. You know? Exactly. Like, yeah, he was really, mm -mm. I didn't like that. So, it did get me thinking. I wrote down a couple of, um, well, a couple of bullet points, questions about things that I, I see in um some men in real life after watching that. Which, I mean, that was real life, but... So I did write a couple of things that I that I noticed that I just wanted to discuss. Yeah, with men in our lives yeah. you know, that we cross paths with. And they might not even be aware that they do it because it's so what what is so um it's so natural the norm. Them. You know, that's how society allows it and so they don't see the problem. You know, like what's what's broken doesn't need to be fixed sort of thing, it seems like they act like. But really, it, no, it is broken, and it definitely needs to be fixed. And to be honest, perfect example is our former president, <laughs> his name. But... <sighs> I'm not going to comment on that one. <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that one, but you see how she feels. I'm not going to say I agree or disagree, but you know. You that whole locker room talk. Yeah, that locker room talk definitely needs to be switched up. And we also watched... Coming to that point of the locker room talk, mm -hmm. the way they, he said, oh, yeah, it was just locker room talk. A lot of guys be having these locker room talks, and they don't check each other on certain things that I feel like if you have females in your life, or even if you don't, but you have females in your life, like bro your sisters, your mom, whoever, there's certain things that shouldn't be okay that even other guys in, are discussing yeah. and you're not even checking up on it. Even in closed doors, like, yes, it definitely needs to be checked. Because when these conversations are happening and whatnot, it makes them feel like it's okay to bleed out. And it comes off towards us. We see it. We see it visually. Y'all do it. To us. Mm -hmm. So, like, check yourself. Check yourself. This is, this is what, um, locker room talk, I feel like, like, led to like um what is it locker room talk definitely bled out to us like how it affects us is because a lot of times now when females if they like if they don't have like long sleeve turtleneck and stuff like that like you know they're not fully covered up or whatever then men feel like it's an invitation to something to something else for them right and Listen, how dare especially you? in this world that we live in and now women have stepped up and pretty much taken their own rights. Period. So I'm not going to say I agree with everything that they wear, but then that's my preference. But if a female decides to put on, okay, let's say, you know, those little booty shorts, you know, and they showing off their stomach. When they put on that clothes, they looked in the mirror, they said, oh, this is going to look cute on me today. And that's why they stepped out with it. They didn't step out with it saying, oh, I'm going to put this on so some random guy can shoot his shot or come try to fill me up. Like, no. no, no. They not asking for nothing. Like, that's the word I'm always hearing guys say, especially like when females wear certain things. Oh, well, they ask for it. Like, no. What did we Unless ask they for? Verbally set it out their mouth and ask for something? No. They're no. not asking for See, anything. See, this is why the whole YouTube movement started. Exactly. I don't care if she's walking in front of you naked. If she didn't tell you to touch her, don't touch, touch her. her. For real. Just look. Don't touch. Don't, don't touch. touch. For real. It's your eyes. Nobody can't say you can't look. You put it on. It's there. It's my eyes. You're going to look. But all that extra stuff, this is where you guys get into a lot of trouble. Exactly. That, that really brings me to the point of... We don't be playing hard to get. Like, seriously. That is dead. No, we don't be playing hard to get. Like, nine times out of ten, if we want you, we will let you know. And we will we will act accordingly. We will do that. We're not going to play hard to get. No. A lot, a lot of times, times it's difficult for us to play hard to get on someone that we really want. Exactly. Even if we try, like, <laughs> you know, having our little shy moment or whatever. But honestly, if we want you, you know it. You know it. There is no hard to get. Like, no. 
This is 2021, sir. Okay? <laughs> Thank you. And then that also leads me to, like, men feel like sometimes that if they provide something or they pay for something, that that means that we that's have That's an invitation to, for sex. That's an invitation for sex. And no, no, it's not. Because, you know, I was talking to somebody recently and I asked them, I said, why do men feel like like sex is a given on the first date? And he said the same reason why females feel like men should pay for the first date. And I said, what? So, like, so basically that sounds like prostitute actions. That sounds like a pay, uh, pay, uh, payment for a, you know, for a, a service. Like, no, that's not what it's about. I just, and I just don't think that even, even the men, I don't feel like you should just want to have sex with a female the, on that first date. You don't know anything about her. You don't know really what's going on. It's the first date. Mm -hmm. That's, this is, that's just my personal opinion. People have their own ways about that, what they decide to do. And don't get me wrong, because women, we pay for ourselves. But I feel like if you ask us out on a date and maybe we establish, you know, who's going to pay for what, or whatever the case may be. But if you claim that you got this and you're going to be paying for X, Y, and Z, you should not expect me to sleep with you because you paid. Where do you do that at? Exactly. Where do they do that at? <sighs> mm -hmm. These are some men. I'm not going to say all men. I'm just saying this is just something Dirty John really got us thinking about. Like, some things... Because that is what he wanted. Dirty John? The, um, John, yeah, he really wanted to have sex with her on the first date. And she decided, she was like, no. And he was kind of acting entitled. Mm -hmm. And, like, just laying on her bed. And it just... And he was really, like, he was upset. Doing the most. Yeah. And that like, was one of the signs right there. That should have just told her, you know what? Let me run the other way. Let me run the other way. No, seriously. But then he came back. He came back to her and tried and to, like, apologize. And, yep. And, you know, like, you know, try to wine and dine her in a way. You know, like, I'm like... That's another thing. Like, don't don't put off this type of this fake energy. Act act like how you are all the time. Don't try to put up a fake a front for the first date or the first meeting or anything like that. Cause that's just wrong. If that's not you, that's not you. And at the end of the day, the relationship is not gonna be long lasting or anything like that. If you put up a different persona because they fell in love with somebody who's not you. Mm -hmm. That's just but sad But that's what a lot of people do. I mean, I'm going to say for girls and guys or whatever mm -hmm. that, you know, you usually put your representative first before you put yourself. That's why with me, I know that that's the case. So I push all the buttons because I need to meet the real you. <laughs> the real I'm going to push all the buttons. I want to see who you are. I'm going to make you comfortable where we're just talking as buddies, as friends, just to get to know you because... I don't care for who you showing me that you are, and that's not really you. But you're, I feel like also your representative that comes out should be similar to you, at, at least. least. Like, <laughs> it's like, it shouldn't be a whole new person, like, you know, no, I don't like that type of stuff, for real, honestly. Makeup is another thing. Like, a female usually isn't wearing makeup for you. It's usually for them. They decide they want to look more exotic or something like that. So that's not that's not really a man's place to speak on about the whole makeup thing. I just hear that a lot and it, it, it irks me. I don't really wear makeup too much, but it does irk me that they feel like, oh, like they can dictate what you wear, what type of makeup you put on your face and stuff like that. Like that's not, that's not cool. That's not your business. Really, like for us, we usually walk around with no makeup because we're just beautiful anyway. Right. But when I put makeup on, I put makeup on just to look exotic. I don't put makeup on. Oh well, I'm gonna go see this guy. Honestly, if I'm gonna go see somebody, maybe I'll put a little lip gloss or something like that. Maybe a little eyeliner. But I want you to see me. This is who I am. Right. I'm beautiful without like skin on bomb. Like I'm beautiful without any makeup. But if I do decide to put makeup or put a makeup on. Don't judge me for it. Because I really didn't put it on for you. I put it on for me. Like, exactly. The thing is, with females, they like what they like. We like what we like. So, if we decide to put whatever clothes on our body or not, that's for us. We looked in the mirror and this is what we wanted to do today. That's just it. 
You was not in our You mind. was not a thought. And especially if you some strange man that we don't know. We definitely wasn't definitely thinking about, wasn't you. Think about you. And even if we were saying, you know what? I'm going to this party, whatever. And I know such and such is going to be there. And I'm going to put this on. Because maybe it was an ex or something like that. Yeah, that's just for you to look at them and be like, mm. But nothing else? Not an invitation? No. At all. And another thing, a lot of times I realize when, a lot of times I realize when females and men are having a conversation and maybe a debate, um, sometimes they turn into arguments or whatever, whatever. Like when a female says uh, they're trying to make their point or something like that, a lot of times men would be like, oh, you're too emotional or, oh, you're too angry or, you know, like something like that. And that's just, it's so, it's so agitating because honestly, Men are very emotional, like realistically, like when you're talking about debates and arguments and stuff, they cannot like, they cannot ex ever accept if they're wrong or they don't ever want to hear like another female's opinion, opinion, I feel like. And it it's like be... they have to hear it from a male mm -hmm. to listen. Yep. You could tell them up and down, oh, this is, you know, this is how I feel, or this is what it is about whatever situation. They won't receive it the same unless it's coming from a different, another male. Another male, yeah, and that's not cool. And then also, or they'll take like, they'll listen to one part of your statement. Forget everything else you and, said. Right. But as and long as they know they can, they can thing. spin that one word that you said, they will just run with it. And I just feel like that has to stop. We are humans. We should be able to have conversations. We should be able to learn from each other, males and females. We should both be able to learn from each other. All of us should be able to learn from each other. We're all here learning new things. Nobody knows all the answers to life. So, like, it's not about who's right and who's wrong. It's about getting to the right answer. And sometimes you have to listen to both point of views to get there. Mm -hmm. Even if you just have to agree to disagree. That's true. That's true. You could respectfully agree to disagree, but you don't have to belittle or try to downgrade the other person. That's never okay. And they do it a lot in politics. Like, if, uh, especially when it comes to like strong vocal females, yeah. And they automatically, you know, pick, um, pick them out to be, um, too aggressive or just crazy. And it's always that stigmatism on us. When, honestly, we're just trying to make our point. Exactly. You could either take it or not take it. But at the end of the day, let us make our point. You made yours, let us make ours. You see the world from one side, and we see it from another. Yes, I agree. And that also brought me to, remember when we was watching Jubilee? Yeah, Jubilee. And um, they had that segment on, what was it? Oh my gosh, on... Men's activist, sorry, men's activism and feminist, like versus feminist, middle ground, I should say. But men's activism, do y'all really feel like? I'm sorry, I'm not trying to belittle the group, but do y'all really feel like y'all need a men's activist group? Like that in itself is like just because there's a feminist group, then you want to make a men's activist group. Well, they can have a men activist group if they actually, you know, opening up the the table and talking about, okay, why do women feel a certain way about us? Or, right. you know, like, they have, can have that, that have group a, amongst yourselves and things like that, but don't use it as a, oh, let's go against feminism. Because really, like we, we got, females got rights well after the males had their rights. It's y'all always been seen as superior. Y'all always had a voice. We had made the feminism group. The feminism group was created because females did not have a voice. So that's why I don't understand the point of the men's activist group because it's like y'all been up here. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm Like I didn't like when he was trying, when one of the guys was trying to like say, well, um, what was he saying? It was that, I think he was that Asian guy when he was trying to go after that girl was like, I'm like, what's the point? What is the point of your argument? Like, what's the point of your, 
I just want to understand. I don't understand the point of feminism. Can you explain it? Like, how do you not understand why the group was made? Like, even if you don't agree well, with all the things. Then she had to, like, like, pretty much break down on, you know, her situation. Like, it, it was more like he was... Sh- okay, sh- I don't know how it really worked. I can't remember right now how, I, how it went down, but it was pretty much he was saying, like, I don't understand what y'all women issues are with men when y'all go out. And she was like, every time I go out, there's always some guy try to hit at me or touch me or, like... Yeah, like, and, she was she was explaining that. I remember what you're talking about. And then after that, she was like, she was like, it's not that we need to be protected by men. We just need y'all to not, you know, like... Right, because he think about, well, we here to protect y'all. No, we don't need no, protection. we don't we need just protection need y'all, y'all to not, not hurt us. That's it. Just don't hurt us. Like, we don't need you to, oh, protect us, but just don't hurt us. That's it. Right. That's all we ask for because we be. weren't, we didn't, we weren't here to be built just for a tool for you guys. That's, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. We are, we are human beings as much as you are human beings. Mm-hmm. We are not property. Right. You know? Mm-mm. That's, Yeah. Yeah. And that whole stuff where, oh, you are a woman, so you should know your place. What? What place? Explain that. <laughs> oh, for real. Like, let's be honest. Especially nowadays. I mean, we could always do it, but we didn't have, you know, the women back in our days didn't get that chance like we have it now. Yes, to speak and... To speak out To and, do, you know, be free in right. order to work. And then be and in a more male... Be, uh, um, work environment, as they call it. Right, right. And, like, the crazy thing is, honestly, why are we being taxed for... For tampons and pads and, like... Things yeah, that we, things can't, that we help. can't help. That's like, happening naturally to our body. Yeah, that's... That's crazy. Exactly. That's insane. That, speaking of, I do have something else to say. When it comes to, like... When it comes to you guys releasing inside of a female mm. or whatever, and then expecting us to be the only ones to deal with it, like you're the one, you're the one who injected part of yourself inside of us and got the nerves to say we trapped you. Oh, girl, let me tell you. Let's talk about that. I hate when men say, "Oh, well, she trapped me." How she trapped you, dude? How she trapped you. You the one holding the sperm. Your pullout game trapped you. It wasn't strong. And then not even just that, but then, uh, and I know a lot of females get this too, so let's be real. They'll be like, oh, I want you to have my baby. Who said I wanted to have your baby? baby. That's what I'm saying. That's not, that's what I'm saying. That's not the only purpose of us. And then they turn around and be like, well, it's your responsibility. It's your problem. For real. And then they go to their friends and they go to all the people and be like, oh, this is what she did. She made me do this. No. They don't be telling y'all some of the behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, they was saying, oh, I just want to give you a baby. And a lot of times we're like, no. That's a lot of, that's a lot of change. Then that some has to men, in the female body. Some men will, will bust inside of you and don't even they tell don't say you. nothing to you. Nothing to you at all. Now, but, granted, I'm not saying for you to just be out there having sex with anybody unprotected. That's a whole different that's, subject. Yeah, that's a completely different but, subject. But the times when they don't be using the protection of whatever would ever be happening. Or they even know that they're kind of busting. They don't say not say a word. Say not a word. And then when you pop up pregnant, they looking at you crazy. Dude, you know what happened. Exactly. That, mm-mm, mm-mm. And we, no, and we not expecting, we should not be expected to be the only ones to deal with it because it was a 50-50 effort, 50-50. It's your fault just as much as it's my fault, it's my fault just as much as it's your fault. That's all I'm saying, seriously. And then both of us should be there to have to deal with it. If I have to, if we have to go through to go any procedure that we have to get done, you, you should, should also be, right be there, there because you going through the procedure just as much. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel. That's mm-hmm. how I feel about that. Mm-mm, mm-mm. And also, why do men only care about their orgasm? They don't care. About... 
They only care oh, about their orgasm if they let if they mean. let loose and stuff like she said this way. <laughs> If they let loose and everything like that, they feel like, oh, like, they don't give enough. They don't be like, hey, you good? Some of, some of them, I should say. Some of them do. But some of them really don't, like, make sure the other person's good as well. That's, that's, listen, equality. <laughs> let me tell you something, females. What we need to stop doing is stop faking it. Yes. We need to be real. Yeah, that is that is definitely on. My if it ain't good, let them know right then and there ain't mm-hmm. good. It's There's not. no reason why you should be faking it in the bedroom, and then they thinking around, going around thinking like, yeah, I'm the man, I did that. You ain't do a goddamn yeah. thing, cause yeah. I ain't come yet. What you did? You came. <laughs> like for real. Listen, me, I, I play no games. None. Zero. Listen, and I, I am not faking the funk for nobody at at all. all. If you're bad, you're going to know right then and there you're bad. You're bad. And I'm, and I'm timing you. Like, all right, this is corny. I'm giving you two more seconds. Be it's done. Two more seconds for me. Two more seconds. Be done and be out. Or, and just, <laughs> or just go. Just go because you're wasting my time. And on that note, I feel like we gave you a lot to think about. <laughs> okay? So let me know in the comments down below. How do you feel? Is there anything? Do you feel like we're missing things? Do you think we're completely wrong? Just let's talk about it down in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. (laughs) Peace. We out.